Hi, I'm David Soper, one of the technical marketing engineers supporting Cisco Intersight. Today I'll be walking through a demo of enabling single sign-on through external identity providers. So to start off, I'll go to intersight.com and I'll look at new options here for both logging in with my cisco.com ID or logging in through single sign-on. To set up single sign-on, I will need to start with an account that's been created through a cisco.com ID. So I'll sign in to my existing account with my cisco.com ID. And once I've signed in, I do see another new feature just rolled out within Intersight, which is the ability to select a specific account that I'm a member of. So you can name accounts from within the Intersight settings menu. And here I've got named accounts for DevNet and then my TME demo account which is what I'll go in and use today. And from the main dashboard, I'll now navigate to the settings menu to set up single sign-on. So another recent change is to the settings menu, and this used to have options to add users or do other things. Those have changed a little, and in this case, I'm going to go in and set up an identity provider. The guided help will actually walk me through click by click what is needed to do that, and I'll just follow along as it does that. I won't read all the menus here, but the key points as I walk through this is that the SAML authentication in the back end requires both metadata from intersight.com and from my external identity provider. So to start, I will go download the metadata, and next I will click Add Identity Provider. And I go in and I provide an arbitrary name for this. In this case, this will be a demo using AWS or Amazon Web Services single sign-on capabilities and I'll name it AWS demo. My domain name comes from that single sign-on within AWS. So next I'll go look at AWS single sign-on setup. Any single sign-on service supporting SAML authentication can be used. For AWS I'll go look at the single sign-on service within AWS and AWS provides a lot of additional information. I won't cover all of that today, but the key thing I will do is I will go enable a custom application. To do this, I add a new application within AWS SSO. It is a custom SAML implementation. I will add it and then I can do all the configuration here. Other identity providers will have similar setup, but it is key to read the documentation for a given identity provider to go through that. Here I'll name it as Intersight, and the key piece of data I need at this point is the metadata file from AWS, which I can then import back into Intersight. So I've downloaded that SAML metadata at this point. From the AWS side, I now browse and upload the metadata from Intersight that I downloaded just a little bit ago and I can save these changes back into AWS and at this point Intersight is an accepted SAML authentication endpoint from AWS. Scrolling down a little I can take a look at the endpoint that's being accepted from here and that is Intersight.com. The back end of all this is an AWS Active Directory instance so that's where all my user data is actually cut, and AWS is just a front end for that through single sign-on. So my actual user identities, emails, all the other login information is actually kept in Active Directory, and then the AWS SSO provides that mapping of that data back into the SSO services that Intersight can use for authentication. So a couple more things I will need to do on the AWS side. One is to actually assign users that are allowed to authenticate through this SSO endpoint. And these users, again, are configured in Active Directory on the back end. I've got a couple of read-only users with the name read-only. And I can search for those, and I can add one of those. In this example, it'll be just read-only, the read-only user. And he is now authorized for access through this SSO endpoint. I'll also need to set up attribute mappings, and I'll do that in just a minute. But first, I'll finish out back on the Intersight side, my domain name, intersightdemo.cisco.com, and I'll upload that metadata from AWS as an identity provider. Once that's complete, I've got AWS as an identity provider here in the single sign-on menus of Intersight. So to add users in this account, I'll go back in and go through guided help on adding a new user. Again, I navigate to the settings menu. 
click users and select add a new user. I'll use my AWS identity provider here. It's all been set up so that he can do that. And then the email for this does have to be a fully qualified email that will be used in authentication. So my user is read only and my domain through this AWS identity provider intersitedemo.cisco.com I want him as a read only user on the intersite side. That's where intersite provides control of administrator or read only access regardless of any permissions back in the external identity provider. A lot more information out on intersite.com slash help. The what's new menu shows what's new in the portal and that includes the settings screen I was going through, account selection directly after login, and then the single sign-on config. The single sign-on config I'll go through one last step which is needed in attribute mapping and the documentation to know how to do that in, dinner, in different identity providers is here in the single sign-on help pages within intersite.com. The example posted currently is through Okta, which is a little bit different setup, but the same basic SAML integration in the back end. And I'll pull up this Okta help page and take a look at some of that example documentation. More documentation will be coming as other identity providers are fully qualified, so AWS and other providers will eventually be on these help pages. So the help pages for creating an Okta integration contain a lot of the same data, although Okta operates a little different than AWS. One of the key pieces of data here is the name ID or subject format. This is how users and user names are identified between your single sign-on and inner site. So back in AWS, the last thing that I need to do to finish out this is actually set up my attribute mapping so that that data is passed correctly between my SSO provider and inner site. Attribute mappings within AWS are documented in the single sign-on pages. The key attribute that I'm looking for here is the user email, which is needed as the subject or name ID in SAML. So this will do variable substitution in AWS, and I'm using the user email as the subject. And the format of that is email address. Once I've saved changes here, AWS SSO is now set up to be the identity provider for Intersight, and I can go sign in with SSO at intersight.com. Back on the main intersight.com page, the new option here is to sign in with SSO. And I can select that and I can enter the email address of that user I've previously added, which is configured through an external identity provider. The full email there was read only at intersightdemo.cisco.com, and that will use my AWS SSO integration to authenticate this user and allow him to sign in to intersight.com. And once I've signed in there, I land at the same landing page and I can go verify from the profile menu in the upper right the signed in user and his privileges. And I see that I'm the read only user and I have the role of read only. Thank you. For more information, please visit the following websites.